Hello everyone and welcome to this video where I want to talk about something that I've been asked so many times in the past. It's a topic that is quite um, intricate to be honest, but it's also quite related to Stormworks and my building in Stormworks, funny enough. So it's not fully off topic, but that topic is what made me become an engineer? What is my engineering story? And here I'm going to share it with you. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background. I'm a structural engineer, meaning civil structural. I've been working as this for 10 years now, as most of you know. I've been involved in a variety of projects, both in the Alberta oil sands, commercial projects, and a lot of other projects in between for all types of things, mostly industrial. That's kind of what I prefer to do. So I've been an engineer for 10 years, did school for four years before that. What did I learn? Now, a lot of you are aspiring engineers or young people that are wanting to, you know, about to go into university or maybe in university, maybe you're out of university, but thinking of a career change to some degree. So you'd like to learn what engineering is all about. And I'm going to tell you, it's not about someone operating a train. Engineering in the modern terms is someone who designs, who creates systems, invents, and pretty much is the creator of almost everything that we have around us in terms of technology, whether it be a geotechnical engineer, software engineer, civil, structural, mechanical, electrical, programming, there's all chemical, all kinds of engineers out there, all kinds of different engineering categories, but most things have engineers involved. So with that, why did I become an engineer? So first of all, I'm going to say that it is sort of a family business in a sense that my parents are both engineers, my grandparents were engineers, and they're all engineers in kind of either the coal industry or industrial, whether it be oil sands in Alberta and Canada or other types of resources. So that was a huge inspiration to me, uh, watching them be engineers at a young age, I really int was intrigued by that, but it was more than just my intrigue, obviously. Um, myself, I love to build things, I love to create. I almost thought I wanted to be an inventor when I was a kid. I loved the idea of building things, you know, with my own hands, with my own brain, putting everything together and being proud of it. End of the day, being proud of what I've come up with and made. So that's one of the things that I looked at when I was choosing my career. Now in high school, I found I was pretty good at math. I found I was not so good with the humanities and social studies and English and all that stuff. Good enough, passable, right? But not, they, those weren't my passions. My passions were designing things. My passions were computer programs. So I kind of took that and decided, how am I gonna apply that? So I was between architecture and engineering, to be honest, and I chose engineering because engineering is more math and science based, I find, where architecture is more art based. Now in Canada here, an engineer and architect, there are some overlaps. You can design a building if you're an architect, a certain size building, and an engineer can also design a building if it's industrial. So there are certain overlapping items, but I'd like to think the majority is uh, fairly different. and it's. I've, I've noticed that throughout my career when working with architects, they are more of the mastermind of the whole creation, whether it is, a, for example, if it's a building, right? They're the masterminds and they envision it and the walkways and where people are going to go and egress and everything. So there's a lot of work in the architectural side. And then engineers, in essence, have to make it all physically stand and not collapse. That I'm talking about structural, but that applies to chemical and electrical and everything. I mean, those those guys are the brains behind it that are actually putting the pen to the paper and coming up with the design work. So that is kind of what encouraged me to want to lead myself into this onto this path. And I did it and I honestly uh, have not looked back. Now, like I said, that was in high school where I sort of found myself intrigued by those things. And then in university, I applied, I was in, and I was doing, uh, the first year was general engineering. So I actually did electrical programming, geotechnical, and all the other types, mechanical. So I did, in first year, you do all them. Now, I don't know if it's in your university that you're considering, but I really do like that system. Some universities actually do that for two years, where you take general classes, 
and then after your two years you choose a specialization so that actually ended up being really nice because i didn't know whether i wanted structural or mechanical now stormworks is pretty much mechanical engineering almost um i ended up with structural because i told you about my passion about possibly wanting to be an architect and i found that there was the greatest similarity for that vision there uh but realistically it was so good because i found out that my passion was not electrical engineering for example and whether i, I have a little bit of a understanding of it throughout my professional career it's not something that I could do day in and day out. Same goes with chemical engineering. So it's nice to see the variety of these engineering uh, kind of areas and then choosing what it is you like. Now, I will warn you, the university has a lot of math. So be prepared for algebra, for calculus and matrices, all that type of stuff. You have to have a grasp of math. You can't just be wanting to design things unfortunately so there is a very heavy math base and that's not for everybody fair enough uh but i you know be warned that there is it's it's math heavy and then also you have to be good at technical reports technical writing reporting all that good stuff and realistically i enjoy that stuff a lot i find it quite satisfying after a long project you know to come up and showcase what it is you've done what are your findings what what is the math that led you to your conclusion why is your conclusion what it is and all that good stuff so in my career i did a variety of different types of jobs um everything from commercial buildings all the way to kind of mines to assessment you know if something's very old you have to look at the lifespan remaining that type of thing and I do enjoy a lot of it. But what there is, is also not every job has parts that you love. There's some parts that you may like less. And engineering is no different. That's probably any job. You just have to kind of find the sweet spot and what it is you like. So, you know, that said, there is lots of times in, in engineering where you may be required, for example, to be on site. So if you have a family, you know, you're away from your family. That's not always easy for some people, especially if they have young kids or there may be times when you're required to do a job that isn't really your preference but that is end of the day if you're working in a company that's not your own meaning you don't get to choose your own jobs you're kind of at the mercy of what the projects are but i've not had that in my experience i've actually enjoyed every part of it i find even when i am physically on site I do learn a lot there because that's all such good, you know, career building steps. It's just not for everyone. And, you know, you have to be kind of aware and knowledgeable of the things that may come from your job. So that is one portion. Now the design work, the math, the modeling, I love all of that. Like I love running uh, STAD and SAP and all my computer programs, Tecla and running them and designing buildings and designing, you know, structural systems. Uh, there's also other parts. There's technical meetings with the client. There is project management. You know, there's a wide variety of different applications. Now, as you progress in your career and kind of end up more knowledgeable, you may get put into a managerial role where you do less design work and kind of lead a team. Now, it all really depends on your specialization because if you kind of become a wide-ranged person, you're a good manager, let's say. If you are a highly technical person specializing in concrete design and you can right away say, yeah, this has to be this mega pa like megapascal and this strength and this rebar and everything, then you're probably going to stay a technical person and end up quite uh, experienced in running the show for that type of stuff. But no matter what it is you do, whether it is the technical side, whether it is the managerial side, I guarantee you it is a fulfilling job. There is creativity, there is design, you're a part of something that ends up with a physical product. Like I still think sometimes it's absolutely surreal that I could look at a certain building and know that I was a part of it. Or look at a certain creation or invention or mechanism or something and be like, I did that, I was a part of it. Maybe you didn't do the whole thing, but even being a small part of it in the real world where it's a mega million dollar project and all kinds of you know moving parts and different t 
technicians and different kind of uh, electrical, mechanical integration, everything. It's really cool. It's really satisfying. I love the design work. I love the modeling. That was one of the biggest things. And that's a actually direct um, reflection on why I like Stormworks so much. So as I said, when you don't run your own company, and even if you do run your own company, you may do things that you don't necessarily want to do and kind of, you don't have that full freedom. You never will. You're always at the mercy of the client, unless you're funding your own job. You're always at the mercy of somebody else, um, which is fine. I mean, that's normal, practical business these days. That's everywhere. You no, Nowhere is just going to be you running the show. But honestly, that's why I love Stormworks so much. In Stormworks, I get to put my brain and my skills and my knowledge to the test in a very specialized type of application where I am the full controller of what it is I want to do. Now, what you see is me putting together this ship and that's because I want to put it together. There's no client telling me this is what they need, this is what they want. So, you know, un not profitable, let's say, and not realistic. In real life, it would be a client having specifications and needing certain things. But Stormworks kind of gives me that release and it lets me fully utilize my skill in an application where I totally am in charge of what it is I build, how I build it, how it works, and there is no one to report to. And I love that. Now, obviously, again, not practical, not realistic, but that's what I do in Stormworks. I have the full control from it being my brainchild in my brain, an idea on my phone or on paper to developing a ship that floats that you know has motors that moves things like in this case or a car and every little design feature is my own or a microcontroller or a display lua programming anything it's all me um obviously not to say there's collaborators that people that i kind of share my experience with and help me out with creations but for the most part it's me and what's nice too is i've kind of built a name for myself i like to think and I've kind of established a little bit of an empire when it comes to these creations. So if I want help, I can go out and get help. But if I also want to kind of run the full show and be fully responsible for it, I can also do that. So that's not rare. That's not often in real life that you can do that. But in Stormworks, you can. And that's kind of where I draw the comparison, because, of course, real life you're at the mercy of the client and sometimes you'll have better jobs sometimes you'll have jobs where you just kind of have to do but you're maybe not super in love with them that's totally fine too uh stromworks kind of gives you that release so to any of you that are interested in being engineers even being engineer technicians being drafts people being involved in the engineering process even trades even construction just anything in that line along those lines i uh encourage you to you know maybe listen to what i said a couple other times but realistically, it is a super satisfying and fulfilling career where you can excel, where you know that you've been a part of something huge. And, you know, that's end of the day, the modern, the modern world, just like how in the ancient days you had the ancient Egyptians building pyramids. Nowadays, you have modern industry, you have modern kind of requirements and jobs and things. And that's where we're at. So being a part of all that makes me super happy, you know, help, helping people get to a level in life where they have more things available to them, you know, inventions, providing, whether it's through providing oil or whether it's creating innovations through solar technology or battery technology or programming. Engineering is kind of what makes the world spin in a modern sense and obviously there is important other things in this life there is healthcare there's medical practitioners there's lawyers there's all kinds of other super super important professions so not bashing them even one bit super i couldn't do some of these things i swear but the engineer is kind of responsible for the technology and innovation around us like let's say and not all of them, but but a good chunk of them. And that's kind of what I'm super proud to be a part of. So any of you interested in this field, free, feel free to comment or to ask me on my Discord server. 
I do love to talk about it. I do love to think about it. It's one of the ma major parts about me is being an engineer. I really love that. So I'm always happy to kind of have that conversation for any of you interested. I've had other people, other users kind of mention that they're in school for university or they're thinking about taking it. And this video hopefully answers a lot of the questions that you may have when it comes to that. So thank you all for watching. I do appreciate all your support. I do love reading all your comments. Stay tuned for more creations, for more content, and as always, happy storm everyone.